What's up? It's your boy, D-Change, coming at you with another Daily Dave. This one's for March 31st, 2020, though it's already 3 a.m. on April 1st. So let's just get this over with because I gotta go to sleep soon. But um, this is very common. Um, I go down deep rabbit holes at times, but not necessarily for the worst reasons. <laughs> I guess I just have that type of personality where I like to um, dive deep into something or I kind of have like an obsessive personality, so to speak, for certain things. So what I mean by that is um, earlier today, um, a friend asked me for help on some computer stuff. So it was something to do with like, you know, uh, <laughs> kind of getting a shortcut in, in software. So I guess I should just lay it out. It was that the person uh, will know what I'm talking about. But um, in Windows 10, you can like get alternate desktops or additional virtual quote unquote desktops. Um, and so what they wanted was like a context menu. So like when you right click on something, you could open a program in a new desktop. But um, this was something I hadn't heard of. But I was like, hey, I mean, I don't know what it where it comes from necessarily. Maybe it's just purely years of experience of kind of fiddling around with computers or wanting a specific level of competence in computers. Because I'm not a software programmer. I'm not a hardware, like firmware. I'm not a firmware programmer. I don't build hardware. I mean, I might put together computers for fun. But that's more of a like, I mean, that's like a, I don't want to say it's easy because it, it, to me it is, but like realistically, you know, parts fit into each other like jigsaw puzzles and it's fine. Once you know what parts you need and what needs to go together, it's, it's fairly straightforward in my opinion. But in a way, that's like a metaphor for everything in life, I guess, because once you learn step by step, and you can gain competency over time, and then you keep applying it. So anyway, like, I've used computers, or at least Windows machines, for a lot of my life, and therefore, there's a lot of things, quirks, that I just happen to know. So, a friend asked me if I knew how to do this, and um, went on a screen share with them, and we, like, walked, basically walked together to discover this process. And in the end, what sucked is, like, after about an hour or so, we didn't figure it out. Like, it was, like, an old program that couldn't do what we wanted it to do, and maybe the new version of Windows is just like, nah, I don't want, I don't want you to be able to do this, or something like that. So we kind of gave up. But it just reminds me of how, um, I don't want to say time is wasted, but, like, because in a way, this time is worthy in the sense that you're trying to discover something and it's okay to fail at something like that, right? I always feel bad about it because it's like, oh, I didn't, f I didn't figure it out. I didn't solve the problem, right? Um, but where I truly feel bad about it is when it's 3 a.m. and I gotta go to bed, but I'm like, this curiosity is killing me. And so as another example, after that, um, I was streaming myself playing some, some games, some new games, and, um, I hadn't streamed in a while, actually, not a whole year, but, like, maybe half a year ago or, or something like that, and so I was trying to figure out, like, what, why did I have settings set this, a certain way, why did I, why did I have video files, like, set up a certain way, why did they convert automatically after I recorded the uh the stream and um I took the time to kind of like kind of go through the settings and then look at what I was doing and then I was like hmm, what's going on here and then in, in the end I figured it out again and I was like oh that's why I did it and then I realized I could have solved a different problem from another night the same way and I'm just like ah oh, that's why that's why I set myself up for this right or that's why I did this originally um and it's kind of rewarding to like to have that realization at the same time you can feel very like oh dang like I forgot it 
you know, like that was dumb of me. But but at the same time, you could also be very thankful of the past self for conveniently setting something up for you, so your present self doesn't you know technically have to suffer. Um, of course, I forgot to check one box, and so that kind of left me stranded the other night. But this night, I figured out what I had done. Uh, if you want to know the specifics, it's literally in, in OBS, the broadcasting software. You can record files in MKV or Matroska files. And it's safer that way because it Matroska files will like preserve. Um, it'll, they'll preserve your video files if they fail mid-broadcast. So that was important to me because I don't want to stream for three hours straight uh, and then have something go wrong. And then I lose the entire file. Um, but what would happen is I would have the file remux into MP4 after I was done with the stream. And all that means is you're converting the MKV file to an MP4 file, which is much more friendly for video editors and video upload sites and all that. It's a, it's a more common uh, file format. So I noticed that my OBS was like remuxing and I was like, oh yeah, I did do that before. But why didn't, why didn't it do that for like my other daily days? And that's where I realized I didn't check the box to, to remux at the end of a recording. Lesson learned. But um, yeah, that's, it's just one of those funny things that um, I think if I were in a different, if, if you were to talk to me like years ago, I would have said, oh, that's so stupid. Like, I can't believe I forgot that. Whereas now I'm a little bit more thankful that at the very least I had it, you know, I had the option. Like, yes, I forgot it. Yes, I had to take the time to like refresh my memory, but it didn't take that long. I mean, yes, it's, it's late and I'm going to regret this. I'm going to need more coffee. I'm going to need a nap, <laughs> but I'm glad that like, hey, you know what, I did set something up because I, I took the time in the past to make sure that what I'm doing is what I want it to do, what I want this program to do. And this actually kind of falls back on a, um, a concept that I was thinking about before, or it was a conversation I had with a friend before when we were talking about like religion and tradition. And um, I mean, the example was kind of I don't want to say it was like placed in like a political uh, context, but the the saying was basically like, perhaps you know someone like a liberal or progressive will see a wall in the middle of nowhere, and they'll say, "Oh, we don't need this wall; just tear it down." But then like a conservative will see the wall in the middle of nowhere, and they'll ask, "I wonder why that wall is there." And so, not to not to get it into like a political discussion. But it's just a, it's kind of like a different, different way of thinking, right? Because if you do think in a very pragmatic or like a very progressive way, you're going to be like, we don't need that wall there. Like currently due to all of our needs, there's no need for that wall. But then if you're, if you, I guess, want to have kind of a, if you live by tradition, right? You're, I feel like you're much more willing to ask like, oh, like the, the wall is there because of a specific reason. We're just not sure why. Now, I have to admit, I feel like a lot of people, regardless, like if they subscribe to a religion or or a certain cultural customs or norms or traditions, they act on tradition without perhaps knowing the origin behind it, purely because that's just the way they're influenced or, or brought up or whatever. And that's fine. That's just... That's the reason why they exist. That's why customs exist. Because there was a reason a long time ago. It meant one thing. And then now, you know, 2,000 years later, it could mean something else. It could even be useless now, right? But that's really up to us as people, as a society, and as individuals to kind of figure out if that belongs in our, in our um, process or not. So it was just something I kind of, like, thought about purely because I was like, oh yeah, um, you know, I did something and I forgot it, but I, I got it back again, I guess. <laughs> I asked why the wall was there and then I figured it out, like, cool. Otherwise, if I had just been like, oh, I'm just going <laughs> to delete my settings. No, I, I don't, I personally don't like doing that though. 
um i i'm especially with like my computer settings i'm much more of a like let's preserve everything except for i guess when i build a new computer or i feel like it's about time for like a like a clean slate then there are a lot of things that i choose to kind of just wipe out but there's always like a, a semblance of like i want to keep these things structured a certain way Therefore, even if I go to a new computer and a, co a newer computer after that, or copy it over to a new hard drive, or copy it over to a completely new system, they maintain a certain type of structure. So, in a way, that's how I bounce back and forth between a more traditionalist uh, viewpoint and a more like progressive viewpoint. I don't know. That's just uh, just that's just the thought I had. Um, you can let me know how you apply these philosophies to your own life you know do you do you operate your computer in a way you would uh live your life um based on a religion <laughs> question mark oh man these are the thoughts i have at three in the morning so yeah that's just an observation that i had and um it's also related to the like i thank past david like the present david thanks past david for thinking of future david you know so sometimes i th this is a philosophy i try to apply which is like do the thing now so that you know tomorrow you don't have to worry about it and so that's why i do stuff like i lay my clothes out for the next day on like my chair so that in the morning when I wake up I can just put them on I don't I don't hit that a hundred percent of the time but uh, I do most of the time and so that's become a habit that uh that I'm very grateful for because it's really it's it's fairly it's easy you know it takes less than a minute I'm, I'm basically on autopilot during weeknights um, this whole quarantine shelter in place thing though is kind of messing things up I've been talking to a lot of people and or I've been seeing what they've been writing and yeah, they they also agree that like, you know, as much, you know, maybe as much as people do like working from home, the people who are like not super used to it, like we're definitely feeling the the difference versus like in an office environment. So I think some will adjust better than others and um it's just something we have to deal with, you know, it's just that's life, you know. Change is inevitable. We just, but we do get to choose how much we change and at what pace, I guess. <laughs> All right. I don't want to ramble on anymore. Uh, I said it was going to be a short one and I'm like ready to go off for another way too long. So I hope you enjoyed this talk, this, uh, this low volume talk. <laughs> Maybe I should do an ASMR video. No, I'm just kidding. I, yeah, <laughs> I have a very love-hate relationship with ASMR videos. Anyway, um, well, I hope you enjoyed this talk, and I hope you let me know what, uh, what you think of the random thoughts coming out of my head, and I want to hear your stories, if you have any. So until the next time, uh, take it easy, take care, keep clean, um, love your loved ones, and um, treat yourself, stay safe, peace out.